Hi, my name is Mark, and this is the Port Keys Key Grip. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not a huge fan of grips. They have their advantages. They have some controls on here that it's nice to have, depending on how you're used to operating with your camera. But uh, as far as holding the camera, when you have a larger cinema camera rig, it's really just too much weight to have on one hand. I'd rather just have like a top handle or a shoulder rig or put it on sticks. But anyway, as far as grips go, this one has a lot of features. So let's take a look at it and dig into some of those features. And I'll talk about the ups and downs. If you've seen some of the other reviews on YouTube, I think those guys had an earlier version because some of the issues they had with it, I don't have with this one. So I'll, I'll get into that a little bit as well. So on the outside, it looks like a pretty standard grip. Got a, a real wood handle here. But over here on the inside, it's a little different story. We've got all kinds of stuff here, connectors and there's a screen here. Here's an Ari Rosette, the mount. So first things first, this is one of the issues other reviewers had was the screw would fall in and they wouldn't be able to tighten it. It would fall out of this knob here. This one doesn't have that problem. Mine doesn't fall out. It sticks out far enough for everything that I've attached it to. This knob here is strictly for follow focus systems like the Nucleus Nano or I believe the Nucleus M from Tilta. It's probably the best feature on this whole thing. It's very smooth, it's well dampened, so it feels really good when you move it. It has hard stops, of course, and this menu system lets you adjust some of the controls for your follow focus motor for the Tilta Nano or M systems. So as far as uh, calibration and hard stops like A and B points, you can set that with this unit here in conjunction with this joystick. There's a couple commands for that. Uh, otherwise, this can't be used for anything else. This is obviously just uh, the record button, record, start, stop. Then on top here we have two controls. There's a thumb wheel right here, so you'd use your thumb like this. And then there's this joystick. And now this is one of the other issues people have had with this thing. This joystick top would pop off, essentially it would break off and they wouldn't be able to get it back on. I haven't had that problem, but I also haven't been playing with it very much. Uh, I found this to be the least useful knob on the whole thing. For one, it's not very intuitive when you're in a menu uh, what you think should be up, down, left, and right is not. So I don't like that about it. And just like they said, pushing in like this, the click, it's not very distinct. So it's kind of hard to know if you've actually clicked it or not. Now, one of the other issues they've had is the rubber coming off. So you can see here, mine has a little bit of a catch here, but it's not actually pulling off. I've seen guys where this whole part right here around their joystick has completely come off along with the knob and they weren't able to get it down. Uh, mine hasn't had that issue yet. I think they might have improved that again. Now down the bottom, there's another difference here. This is the updated battery door. So it has an on-off switch, which helps you um, save your batteries from draining, because if you leave your batteries in here, they will drain. This uses those big 18650 batteries. As you can see, we have a number of connections under here, including a couple of remote connections. This is for connecting to cameras. You have a motor connection, which is for connecting to like a Nucleus Nano motor. And then you also have a LAN C over here. And that's also for connecting to a camera for camera control. So they give you multiple options for controlling your camera. This also will connect via Bluetooth to the Blackmagic Pocket cameras. I don't have a Blackmagic Pocket camera anymore to test with. So let's dig into the menu a little bit. I'm gonna use the 18650 batteries for this demonstration. This is the newer battery door. One of the issues they had with the old one was it didn't close very well, it would pop open. This one, it's hard to shut, you have to push really hard, but once you get it clicked in there, it stays, it doesn't pop open, so that's good. And also added the uh, on-off switch, which I can see that would be a problem before you couldn't shut off the, the power to this unit. When you're using the battery eliminator, this dummy battery here, you can't shut it off because it doesn't make contact on the bottom, and that's all this battery switch does is it breaks the contact at the bottom. So turn that on, and then we press and hold the record button up here, there, that's how you turn it on. And then what we see here is I'm controlling my E2 camera. That's my battery voltage. And this just indicates which uh, setting I'm controlling here with this switch. So left, middle, right, it's a three-way toggle. That's my ND, that's my ISO, and that's my F2 button on my camera, which I've programmed for something, I don't know, zoom maybe. If we press this little mode switch here, it brings us right into the menu, and then we have to use this control stick or the thumb wheel here to scroll in and out. Now, this is one of my complaints is the, the, the control of the thumb wheel is a little inconsistent. So for example, I would think you'd press up and down to move up and down the menu, but instead it goes in and out of the menu, and you have to press left and right to go 
up and down. That just seems in, not intuitive. So let's look at the camera options. Obviously, the E2, I've got Blackmagic, there's some Sony over using the LANC, it's a different protocol. There's some other Sony cameras, Panasonic, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, that's the older version, I believe, and then Canon and RED and back to my E2. So I can use the USB on, on my camera and it goes from USB micro to uh, this little 2.5 millimeter, which plugs into the LENC connector on my camera. So I could also use LENC here, and I have the same control with either cable, so it doesn't really matter. You wanna make sure you get the correct cable for your camera though. So anyway, once you do, let me jump out of this. We can go over here, oops, see there I go, into the function, and this is where you can program what this switch right here does. So if I go into there, I have a lot of options. That's my ND, frames per second. Um, you can see what these are, just all kinds of options. Some of these only apply to the E2 because that's what I've set it to. So if I go back and change this to um, say Sony and go down, we'll see that I think these options have changed. Yeah, see mag, peaking, display. I get a different set of options depending on which camera I've selected. And then at the very bottom we have version, which is just what version of the firmware am I on, and then I can update it, excuse me, I can update it uh, using the USB. And you get out, you just hit the mode switch again, and then we're back out to this menu. So that's fairly straightforward. There are some other commands uh, for this scroll wheel here when you're using it for a follow focus wheel. You can set the A and B points, and you can also trigger calibration on the Nucleus Nano motor. Let me get that rigged up and I'll show you what that looks like. To trigger the calibration mode on the Nucleus Nano, you just hold the record button and the joystick down at the same time for about three seconds, and then it triggers the calibration mode, and that just means the motor finds the hard stops on the lens automatically. And then once that's done, you can see just how responsive that is because this isn't a wireless control. It's hardwired directly to the motor, so it responds immediately. It's only getting eight volts through the key grip. It's not getting the full voltage of my V-mount battery, but that's enough to drive this lens. And to set A and B points with the motor, you just push the joystick to the right, and it sets the A point. You move the wheel to your second point, press the joystick to the right again, now you set your B point, and you can see how when you scroll through the entire range of that wheel, it's only turning the lens just a little bit, bouncing back and forth between those A and B points. And then to clear the points, you press the joystick to the right again, and that resets. Now you have the full focus control. One complaint I have about the screen is when it's attached to a camera like this, it's tucked in there so far, it's hard to see, and especially in daylight, this is an OLED screen, which is nice, but it's not especially bright. And if you're in full sun, it's really hard to see. So now I have my LANC cable here going to my camera, and I've got this uh, scroll wheel here programmed to control the electronic ND on my Z-cam. We can see as I wheel, move that wheel up, and it's, it's really quick, like there's no delay, which is, this is, in my opinion, the most useful feature. This is what I would use a grip for, is controlling something like electronic ND. I wouldn't want to use it for ISO necessarily, because I don't change my ISO very often, like this is changing the ISO. Uh, you can, you can program it for whatever you want. But I think the electronic ND is the most useful feature uh, to control with something like this key grip. I've programmed the middle switch here to control the menu on the Z cam. Now you can't actually pull up the menu using this joystick. You have to hit the menu button on the camera. And once it's there, then you can use the joystick. Um, now this is what I was saying, it was not very intuitive. You would think that by pressing up and down, I'd be able to go up and down to the menu, but that's not how the Z cam works. The menu system will let you go left and right. So I'm actually pressing up and down to go left and right. And that's not too crazy because the, the buttons on the camera itself are up and down, but it's just not very intuitive. And then to go into it, you just press the middle button. And now I'm in here in the menu, press it again. And you can go in there and there's that, that goofy feel on this joystick is that it's kind of mushy. Now you can actually use the scroll wheel itself, which I think is more intuitive since it's going up and down now. And pressing back, you have to actually hold it for a second. It's, it's not the greatest. I would personally just reach over here and use the camera menu buttons because it's faster. I can move around quite a bit faster this way. But it's nice to have the option. I, I know some people find that useful. Let's talk about the accessories and what's included. So of course you get the key grip, but also comes with this handle strap and the, this thing here, which they call the tiger mouth. I think it's for wrapping around 
the strap or something. I'm not really sure. I don't like using straps. It strains my hand, so I'd rather just not. Uh, the two batteries, of course, comes with a battery charger. It comes with an RE rosette mount, and it has a slot here for these quarter 20 screws. This cable here is for the uh, firmware update. So you plug this into the key grip, and then there's a thumb drive that you can plug in here to update the firmware, just like their other products. And then it also has this uh, USB cable here, which I believe is just for charging the batteries. It doesn't come with a five volt charger, so you'll need that. It's like an iPhone charging cable or charger unit. It's pretty standard. Now, what it doesn't come with are these other cables over here. Well, it depends on which one you buy. If you look on their website, they have a number of different options. You can buy one for Zcam, for Panasonic, for Sony, et cetera, et cetera, different cameras. You can also buy one that does motor control for Tilta, and that's this cable here. So it goes from this five pin, which comes out of the back of the unit, and then it has this USB micro that plugs into the motor. Now, as far as the camera control cables, they have one like this for Zcam. This is actually pretty common at LANC, it's a three pin. And then it goes, again, USB, which plugs into this block right here. Now, I could also use a standard LANC cable and plug in right here and run that to the camera. And this is the one for Panasonic. So they use a four pin LANC. And then again, it goes to the USB micro, which plugs in to the key grip. And if you wanna go without the batteries like I do, you need this dummy battery adapter. It's called the CR7HB. It's available on their website for $100. And it comes with a barrel connector on the end here. And they give you two other cables. One's a barrel to barrel, and then one's a barrel to D-tap. So if you use a D-tap system, you can plug right into your D-tap with this and run this thing indefinitely, and not having to worry about batteries and not having to bring along a charger like this to charge them with. The grip in general feels pretty good in my hand. Um, I don't have really large hands, but this isn't too big. I could, you know, if it feels comfortable enough, I can hold things with this. Um, this is actual real wood, but the majority of the body here is actually metal, it's machined. It's actually quite nice, it feels pretty smooth. It's got this extension part that sticks out, you can wrap your thumb around it. So I don't have any really problems with that. But if I'm holding this entire rig with all this GAC, I mean, that's way too much. I, I, I wouldn't <laughs> you really want to break it down to have like, it's just a, a simple NP battery in the back or whatever you have and a, a simple lens, no follow focus, no monitor, nothing else. Um, I mean, you have to have some kind of monitor with this camera, but uh, just keep it really lightweight if you're gonna have a grip like this, just a single grip. If you have two grips, one on each side, you know, obviously a different one, this is only a right-handed grip, then that's a different story. But uh, I wouldn't wanna hold this camera with just that grip. I wouldn't wanna hold this camera with just any grip. <laughs> it's just a little too heavy for a single-handed operation, at least for me. I much prefer to use a, a top handle like this. So that's the Porky's key grip. Now I wanna know what you guys think. Do you like grips? Would you use this one? Drop a comment down below and let me know. If you haven't already, please hit those like and subscribe buttons. I've got a lot more content coming up, including more equipment reviews, and I'll be getting my hands on a couple of global shutter cameras. I think you'll be really interested in seeing that. So hit that notification bell and you'll know when I post my next video. I'll see you then.